From the inland capital city of Nairobi, it is a six-hour drive or an hour's flight to the luxurious ocean resort of Mombasa. Light cotton clothing is advisable. And don't leave the mosquito sprays at home. Kenya, the West's favorite country in East Africa, the one they don't want to go the same way as Sudan, Ethiopia and Somalia, if only to protect those safari and Mombasa beach club trades. Late last year, the West stopped aid worth $800 million in an attempt to force President Daniel Arab Moy to call elections and a novelty in Kenya, despite 28 years of independence, to allow opposition parties to take part. Until the end of the Cold War, Kenya's Western backers turned a blind eye to corruption, human rights abuses and the inevitable one-party rule. But now the West have moved the goalposts. And sensing a new mood, a handful of journalists in Kenya have been publishing stories about corruption in high places. Lots of stories and lots of corruption. Moy's men don't like it and they've struck back. From Nairobi, Ed Harriman reports. I think the press in this country is freer than many other parts of the world. But I must say that from our own point of view, our press has become extremely irresponsible. They write a lot of things which are based on rumors, lies, character assassinating some leaders in this country, particularly the ruling party Kanu, and the public of Kenya. Kenya publication the Kenyan government most hates is this one, the weekly magazine, Society. The system is not used to truth, so whenever we try to publish what is supposed to be the truth, the system gets annoyed about it, and they get, they get scared. Uh, police came and uh, confiscated or impounded 30,000 uh, Society magazines. And uh, we stayed out of uh, circulation for nearly two months. We've been arrested several times. Me and my wife, uh, uh, five journalists, and uh, we were taken about five, uh, 500 kilometers away from Nairobi. And we have courts in Nairobi. We were taken to court in Mombasa. And the idea was actually to ground uh, this magazine. What have you been charged with? We've all been charged with the... Uh, 11 counts uh, of sedition. We always run the risk of, uh, of police raids. Just uh, a month ago, they just marched in. 20 armed policemen ordered by my staff to get everything uh, relating to society and carry it upstairs to their waiting Land Rovers. They didn't... Um, produce any court order or any uh, legal warrant in support of their action. They just took it. Do you think there's press freedom in Kenya? It's um, getting there. Getting there? The authorities say there is. I think there is more now than there was before. Um, and I think that, that that's as a result of magazines and publishers like Nyamura with Society having the courage to, uh, to continue. We've had people coming to tell us how police are mistreated them in police cells, and we publish it. And it is, uh, I think it is the first time in Kenya that uh, at least the media now, particularly our, our magazine, is exposing these kind of things. We've done a story on licenses being sh for importation of sugar given to people who are close to President Moy. We've done stories about uh, land allocation, which we felt that uh, it was allocated to very influential people and very close to Moy also. But society too has friends in high places. How important has the American ambassador been for the expansion of press freedom in this country? Oh, I think very instrumental indeed. Um, he's been determined to push it through, and he's, he's shown people, really, um, in public, through the media, that um, he, he's going to stand by his, uh, 
his aims. And I think a lot of people have taken courage, um, a lot of publishers here have taken courage from his stance and been more outspoken. So you encourage the opposition to the government here? I, I don't encourage the opposition. I encourage democracy in the democratic process. And that includes the encouragement of a press which carries corruption stories week after week. I suppose that's so. You can be comfortable with that? I'm more comfortable with the stories than I am with the fact of the corruption. I uh, lived out here in the early 60s, and in those days, Kenya was an honest country, it was an honest society. And to see it um, develop corruption as a high art form is saddening. And it's also very deleterious to the development of the country. The American ambassador has been very, very encouraging, particularly to the local people, because uh, the fear which Kenyans used to have that we cannot talk is not there now. The American ambassador told the Kenya government, and more in particular, that he has to improve the human rights record in Kenya. And uh, without that, he will not continue getting aid from the U.S. And whenever we've particularly in society, got into trouble. The Americans have talked, the, uh, the ambassador himself has sometimes protested, sometimes quietly, sometimes he, through the media, and uh, that has uh, helped us quite a great deal. What about the British High Commission? Oh, those ones have been very, very bad. The British seem to be supporting the government which is suppressing us. We don't know where the British stand at the moment. That's deliberate policy. The British High Commissioner in Kenya is Sir Roger Tomkis. He says he prefers quiet diplomacy, and so he didn't want to take part in this film. Their attitude is very much one of uh, what they call behind-the-scenes diplomacy which perhaps could be more interpreted as behind a cup of tea diplomacy. I think that there's a, a risk they run in their refusal to come forward and declare publicly their stand. They run the risk of being seen as complicit in violations to, uh, you know, democratic principles. Either that or they'll just be seen as, as sitting on, on, on the fence, you know, asleep on the fence. When the Numoras were arrested um, and charged with sedition, I recall the Americans making a public statement very quickly. To the best of my memory, the Germans also condemned the action, but I do not recall the British raising the, the, their voice at all on the issue, which I find mildly depressing. What do you think of the attitude taken by the American ambassador here? Do you feel that's an appropriate role for an ambassador to take? To us, it is not. And I think the public of Kenya has been very bitter against the, the American ambassador here for appearing to be siding with the opposition parties in this country. What is your view of the role that the British High Commission has taken? As far as we are concerned, the British High Commission here in Nairobi has been very understanding, has um, not appeared to be taking sides. In any case, the High Commissioner has not come out and criticized uh, Kanu or the government for anything to do with the press. <laughs> the scene in Nairobi now. Sir John Johnson, we've just seen your ex-house there because you were High Commissioner in Kenya from 86 to 1990 and a District Commissioner I know for many years before that and, and you were of course a close acquaintance of President Moy. Just a word on style there. The suggestion is that the British are playing both ends. I mean they're, they're all for this uh, backing democracy thing but, but they're, they're complicit with the government? 
Yeah, I think that's nonsense, really. I mean, the pity about that film was it was really little one-sided. Um, we had the American ambassador, we had well, here you are, here you are, and you were so there. I would like to mm. just say that there is a difference. There is a difference of style, yes. Um, Smith Hempstone, of course, is a journalist. He is undoubtedly enjoying the pleasure of being in Nairobi, which he enjoy, which he likes. And he particularly, I think, sees himself as a different sort of ambassador from the norm. I would hate to rubbish Smithy because he's a very nice man. But, but the norm is somebody who up until last year did turn a blind eye to corruption, to human rights abuses and accepted autocracy. I mean, President Moy could be forgiven for being a bit bewildered that suddenly Britain seems to be on, on the other side. Along I don't think Britain is. I don't think any question that Britain is on the other side. The fact is now that donor countries, and by that we mean mainly the Western countries, have solidarity about the need to see human rights taken into account, to see proper use of aid taken into account, and the British government has made that very clear. But they Indeed, haven't made it very clear, course. have they? Not they as clear as there. the American government Well, not, on that, not as clear as on that film, but the fact is that that film was actually, as it were, slanting towards this particular issue. But where the British government have come forward very strongly is on the need for proper accountable government and indeed that is what I hope Kenya is working towards a multi-party government after the uh, running up to the election and a free choice at the elections free and fair and seem to be free and fair. Rakia Omar let me bring you in your director of Africa Watch which monitors human rights right across the African continent now you, you've actually been banned from Kenya since 1987 for your criticism of the government so I suspect you won't find Sir John Johnson convincing. No, I don't find that argument convincing. Just to put the record straight, I've not been allowed there since 1989. Um, I, th I think the argument that the British government is now solidly behind the democratic process in Kenya is without a great deal of foundation. The uh, British government went along with other donors after the uh, meeting uh, held, um, organized by the World Bank in only in November of last year, uh, by which time there were, there were years of solid evidence that the Kenyan government was committing gross human rights abuses on a wide scale as well as um, being guilty that? of corruption. By that I mean uh, detention of um, political critics, I mean uh, torture on a wide scale. Um, what, uh, the, the other guest you have here will detail his own experiences. Um, stifling of press freedom, uh, appalling prison conditions. Kenya has one of the um, worst prisons in the world, I would say, and not only by African standards, overcrowding. Uh, denial of medical attention, um, especially to political detainees, and a wide range of other abuses. Um, uh, Britain, like many other governments, had evidence of this all along. So um, it's, it's a little difficult to understand why suddenly, in November 1991, Britain decided it, after all, had some evidence of, 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 of this, went along with other donors. Kariyuki uh, Gatitu, you were detained for two years without charge under President Moy, and I believe you were tortured while you were in prison. What happened? Yes, I was uh, picked from the University of Nairobi, where I was a lecturer in computer science. When was this? This was 1986, yes. March 1986. And uh, I was taken to a place called Nyao House, at the basement. There are about 14 cells which were designed for torture. And here, with many other people, uh, I was put uh, in a waterlogged cell for three weeks. And uh, we had beatings. We stayed there without food. In fact, uh, after my detention, for, well, I went to detention for two years, um, I did address the detainee review tribunal. And I told them, if what they did to us was done to animals, the whole international world would rise against the Kenyan government. So John Johnson, where did, where did British quiet diplomacy come to play in the case of Mr. Gatito? Did you know about his no, case? No, I didn't actually, but I must say, absolutely inexcusable. And of course, you came out in 1988. I would like to think that nothing like that could happen to me. There's far more information available. There's far more public pressure. I mean, that's what we're looking at now. But why, why didn't you know? And, and, and what, what kind of diplomacy is brought to bear in, in situations like this? Well, I cannot as I say, talk about something I didn't know about at that time, but what I could say about now is that I agree that Roger Tompkins is much more likely to be able to influence the Kenya government 
by dealing with them in the normal way through government and ministers. That's what a head of mission is supposed to do. That's He's supposed to be accredited to a government. He's not actually supposed to be accredited to an opposition. But, but I disagree there because I think an ambassador is accredited to the country he is sent to. He's supposed to get information about the country and he's not there simply to have quiet dialogue with the government, especially when there is evidence that that government is somehow at war with its own people, torturing, detaining, uh, silencing criticism. I don't understand the, 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 what kind of diplomacy Britain wants. Looking um, ahead, when, when Rakia, Omar, I mean, what, are, are we going to get the kind of multi-party democracy that, that the West says that it's, it's looking for and, and aid will be restored thereafter in Kenya? Well, I think um, uh, the, the immediate future looks relatively bleak and not only because of, uh, of specific abuses by the government, but because the lid has been on for so long that I think it's, uh, it's not going to lead to a democracy as the West understands it because I think there is just a lot of um, settling of scores to be done within the opposition. Unfortunately, I think the opposition seems to be relatively divided at the moment. And uh, so I think if, if, if an election was called, I don't think it's a clear-cut case. But that there will be an election. In, well, first of all, we don't. Well, well, there's supposed to be an election before March 1993, and I'm assuming one will be called mainly under pressure, both internally and uh, and externally. But um, but there will also be a lot of trouble before such an election is held. So, John, are you confident that Britain really is doing enough? I mean, I know we have we have our style, but uh, are we doing well enough in Kenya? It's a country you love. Yes, it is a great affection for Kenya and the Kenyan people. No, I am quite convinced that we are going about this the right way. Quite frankly, what we want to see now is the Kenyans making a fair choice. One party state, in my view, started off in Africa because it was a useful vehicle to allay ethn ethnicity. But now it's had its day. We want to see multi-party democracy. We want to see the people of Kenya deciding in an election that is seen to be free and fair Mr. how they want to be governed. Will we see that, Mr. Getitu? Would you go back to Kenya now? Yes, in fact, so I'm planning to go back <clears throat> in the next two months. Not that there is uh, quietness as far as turmoil is concerned, but uh, it is necessary that uh, people must go on pressurizing Moi to uh, relinquish. And you're confident it's not going to happen to you again? It might happen, but not to the same extent. I'm not saying that there is freedom now today. No, there is still, uh, for example, just two weeks ago, somebody was arrested for imagining the death of the so president. It's, so it's still continuing. I'm yes, afraid it's still, we'll have to still, leave it still, there, uh, but thank continue. you all very much. Next week. Good night.